Hello. Today's video will be about a comparison between AA and AAA batteries from the same manufacturer, in this case Energizer, and I think this comparison will be very interesting. The AA and the AAA batteries have been common for many decades, and the recent trend has been towards AAA batteries being much more common in uh, devices as they required less power and being more compact was obviously the main uh, design constraint. So in general the trend has been towards having smaller devices that of course require less power and as I said AAA batteries are much more common. However AA batteries are still interesting for various applications where larger currents are still important such as in flashlights or um, toys and others that um, have such uh, a need for larger power. So um, what will uh, the video will be focusing about? I think that the most important aspect is first of all to discuss a bit about AA and AAA in terms of uh, physical properties. Both of them can have roughly the same uh, technology being used and I'm expecting results to be quite similar. However, there will be an important uh, difference in capacity that I think will be visible in uh, the amount of current that can be delivered by each battery. But first of all, let's talk a bit about those two battery standards. The AAA battery has a 10.5 mm diameter and a height of around 44.5 mm. By comparison, the AA battery is 14.5 mm in diameter, which is 4 mm more than the AAA, than the AAA and um, around 6 mm more in height, so having a height of 50.5 mm. I think that the most important figure is going to be the weight, because if you think about similar battery technologies, I think that the best possible outcome and expectation would be due to the weight, because just about any sort of um, technology that is being used with similar results in two different sizes will have probably a different behavior in this uh, case. So the weight of a typical AA battery is 23 grams and the weight of a typical AAA battery is 11.5. So we are talking about a difference of around or roughly half the weight of a AAA battery when we are talking about a AA one. <coughs> Sorry, so let's look upon these batteries and see what are their capabilities. So if I'm going to take two batteries, this package as you have noticed has not been opened before and those two batteries have been opened before but they have not been used. So roughly it's going to be the same situation. Alright, so I'm going to switch this multimeter to the current measurement range. And, of course, thinking again about safety aspects, I will mention the following. First of all, never use the, a multimeter's current measuring range like that, except on cases where you clearly know that the devices that are going to be connected to it or the uh, power supplies are going to be current limited because you are going to damage either the power supply or the multimeter. In this case with those batteries there is no such uh, danger but you should be aware that um, using the current meter in this way is not recommended for most uh, purposes. But in this case we are talking about current limited devices and we are not talking about measurements that um, are being made for a long time, so just for a couple of seconds, which is not going to affect the device itself and they are not going to affect the battery too much either. So, first of all, let's make the measurement. 
Um, if you look closely, you can probably notice that I have written on them the amount of current that they initially delivered. These batteries have not been used, so they can be considered as new with just a difference that could be probably due to the first uh, measurement being taken and of course one week spent um, outside of their original package. So 5.2 amps and 5.4 amps. It's important because these values are initial values. You can see that there is already a bit of a variability between those uh, two batteries even if they are the same. So let's make the measurement right now and see where we are standing. Okay, it doesn't matter if you are using the right or the wrong polarity, the results are still going to be the same. The most important aspect is that the measurement is going to be made quickly and with a good contact surface. So, let's see. 5.4 was the highest value being read. And it dropped slowly to 5.3 and then went lower. But 5.4 is still the value that we can reliably consider. 5.0, 5.1. Alright, so there is already a bit of a variation between the initial value that I wrote over here and this value. I don't know in this case if there is some sort of um, wearing effect that occurs in the case of this battery, but clearly it has less capacity than the other one, even if they come from the same package and probably they are from... Uh, this, they use the same uh, technology and the same manufacturing process capability. Let's measure these ones that have never been measured. 4.5. This is a very interesting uh, issue. I uh, thought initially that the value would be higher. 4.4. Yes, it's reliably 4.4. I don't know exactly what happens over here, but let's also measure the other battery. 4.7. Okay, that is a considerable difference. So 4.4. 4.6 probably we can reliably say, because it's a bit above. Okay. Let's make another measurement and then write down the value. 4.3. So it may be due to an imprecise contact. 4.4 seems to be the reliable value. 4.5. Alright, so if I place the contact like this and probably is going to have a larger surface area, the current measurement will be higher. Let's see if I'm right. Not necessarily. But it is around 4.5, 4.5, 4 4.4. Probably we can safely consider 4.4 amps. Alright, so I'm going to write on it 4.4. Let's see. Probably, yeah, somewhere around here. 4.4 Okay, and let's measure the other one again 4.7 I think it's a reliable measurement 4.7 amps All right um, I was expecting less variations, but uh, since we already made this uh, step, let's see how the other two batteries fare, because I'm very curious if they have better or worse performance than this. So, okay, I used some force and was able to do this opening task. Alright, so let's see. Four point four, a very interesting value that seems in line with another measurement at four point seven. Okay, four point seven. That is good to know. And four point seven again. 
Hmm. All right. Take again the measurement. Yeah, 4.7 reliably. And hmm. now it seems to trend lower. 4.6 probably. So 4.7. And I think it will again reach that value. Yeah, reliably. 4.7. Okay. So 4.7 amps. It's a good value. And then this other one is going to be considered as 4.7 again. Uh, think about another aspect that creates a bit of a variation in the values being presented. Uh, any multimeter has a bit of a lag between the moment it measures a specific value and then it presents it on the screen. So I'm expecting this to be in play over here since values can reach that uh, point. Uh, probably with an analog multimeter it would be much easier to see where and how fast the um, gauge deviates but in this case i think that it's uh, much more difficult however readings are fast enough for most uh, circumstances because even if uh, we consider that sometimes readings should be faster i think that the important aspect is the following the value has to reliably be above a certain uh, specific uh, range because if it's not consistent in that place, I am assuming that uh, the current carrying, uh, carrying capacity is not uh, as high. So, um, yes, this is going to be the factor at play. So, we are looking again at, at this set of batteries and I'm seeing consistent readings of 12.7 and with this one being an outlier at 4.4. .4. All right, let's see. 4.5, yes. So probably 4.5 is a reliable first value. So I'm going to correct it. 4.5. Well, what does this range tell us? That most batteries probably are going to be around 4.7 amps, but it goes on to show why you need a specific sample. Because otherwise, probably reading just two of these uh, currents being provided by uh, uh, these two items, these two batteries, will not be as useful as checking a wall batch of uh, batteries. Probably you can have even more um, control and um, reliable testing by using more batteries but I think it's enough to have this kind of sample because it's relevant I'm not expecting those batteries to come from anything else but the same batch so it's going to be uh, reliably informing you of the available capacity and the same goes on for this but I'm a bit surprised that uh, the case goes on with uh, AA batteries having less uh, maximum current than uh, the AAA batteries. I don't know if there is some sort of additional reason why um, AAA batteries have uh, higher currents despite their capacity being probably smaller than the ones of uh, AA uh, batteries. Ultimately because AAA batteries are generally considered to be much more reliable for long-term use and with higher currents than the smaller ones but it's very interesting i was expecting particularly the opposite result with those uh, AA batteries being able to offer uh, higher currents than the AAA ones but i have to say that this is not particularly something that was entirely uh, unforeseen even if i wasn't expecting it because you have to keep in mind um, another um, similar uh, example Think about batteries that were previously in even larger sizes, like uh, D or um, C batteries. And those ones uh, have been manufactured in the last decades with uh, even um, less of a concern in terms of capacity 
than they were some decades ago. Some decades ago, those were the batteries that were used in flashlights. And right now you can reliably use such batteries in flashlights. Even um, batteries that are um, higher in size actually have roughly the same performance. So it may be a case of trying to optimize as much as possible a particular design and leaving the other one more for the um, let's say um, cost advantages economies of scale so this might be one potential answer although i'm not entirely sure if uh, it's um, the last one or the most accurate why probably these batteries these double a batteries that should have been able to have a higher current uh, carrying capacity are not able to uh, reach that value and smaller ones uh, can and um, it's also some sort of, explan of an explanation why having devices using the um, newer or the smaller form factor of uh, AAA batteries are uh, much more common because uh, there is not such a high distinction as it used to be before between uh, the two batteries. Um, even if those values may not be as relevant because, um, of course, we have a small sample size and because we have only a single manufacturer, we have not made across um, comparisons with others, but it may be a good indication why the trend is towards the smaller batteries because they have good enough performance and um, they have some advantages in terms of um, packaging and product design that are much more uh, interesting and um, there is no uh, strong demand for the larger batteries and this trend of using smaller batteries with higher capacities as uh, mentioned is not new in the 60s or 70s think about uh, the fact that um, there were radios that were commonly used uh, C or D sized batteries and as uh, technology improved there were uh, there was a trend towards uh, radio receivers using uh, AA batteries and there are many portable uh, radios or highly portable radios that can use AAA batteries and this was not possible some decades ago both to the battery technology and the technology being used in such devices because they required uh, higher currents so um, the trend is, uh, is not worthy and probably there is going to be much more focus put on having even higher performing uh, smaller batteries than it was before. So I hope this video was uh, informative. For me it was uh, very interesting in terms of um, trying to give a meaning to all these uh, observations. And I hope this uh, gives you a very good uh, insight into what you can uh, ultimately expect. Um, in the end, I still think that uh, AAA batteries can have a longer uh, life in typical conditions, but right now I'm not as sure if uh, this is uh, entirely so, as I was uh, before with, um, let's say, common uh, with a common behavior I have uh, not noticed in, the, in most uh, cases. But it's a very interesting uh, development and um, I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, seeing this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you like uh, the video please subscribe and there will uh, be uh, many more on uh, different subjects that uh, may be interesting. So uh, have a nice day.